Hey everybody, Joy here. June 1, 2022. And we're going to get straight into Simplicity 1461. 1461. It is a tunic. It has a cap sleeve, a three-quarter sleeve, a long sleeve, slits up the side, a v-neck, kind of a rounded neck. I'll show it to you up real close. This pattern. Now, I don't know if it's still out there or not. Do a search, and you'll see if you can find it. I have made it before in this fabric, and it turned out beautiful. It is so pretty, I never wear it because I don't want to spill something on it or mess it up. <laughs> it's one of my prettiest blouses I've ever made. Where did I get the lemon fabric? Maybe Hobby Lobby, but it was three or four years ago. I have all of the pieces cut out. Here's the cap sleeve. Here's the back facing. In the interfacing, there's facings and there's interfacings. Okay, it's the back neck facing, just the interfacing. Here I've got pinned together the front neck facing in the fabric and in the interfacing. Okay, facing interfacing. What about those other kind of facings? We're not going to talk about those today. We're going to talk about what I'm doing. I'm wondering where the rest of the back neck facing is because I need it out of fabric also. Here it is. So here's the back neck facing in fabric. Here's the back neck facing folded in half in interfacing. So those go together. I always cut all my pieces out and put them in a little pile and I keep the pattern pieces with them until I'm sure I don't need them anymore because sometimes I forget to cut the notches, sometimes there's a, a little dot that I didn't mark and I usually don't need the little dots. Um, I just like to have the papers handy. So here's this piece. I have done my pattern correction to it. Right here I've taken a tuck. I've simply cut from the neck over here to the seam line and then I cut into the seam line and so we have a hinge. We have a hinge right here where I took this and I folded it over one quarter inch because I can't stand a gaping neck. So basically if I was doing it on this blouse and it was a princess seam, this isn't, but if it was a princess seam it had the seam right here so I would have taken it and I would have folded it right here to the princess seam and crossed it over. That's what I did here on the front. Now, this pattern has BCD cup. Yeah, it's a simplicity pattern and it has cup sizing, so yay. So I didn't have to do a FBA and I'm using the D cup. I'm not a D cup in a bra, but for some reason in a pattern, I am, and it's probably because I'm so, you know, da -da -da -da, solid bone to the rescue. Okay. <laughs> so that's the front. You don't have to enter. Okay, my friends, for some reason, the sound did not compute here. I'm talking all the way through as you can see but there's no sound here on Photoshop. So I'm just gonna have to figure out. I'm showing you the back center seam and I'm showing you that to tell you how curved and roller coaster it is but I am still able to put a zipper in it. You see how I'm curving the zipper? I'm showing you it will curve like my back. I'm not putting a real long zipper in, but I am putting a zipper to help me get this thing on over my head. I have no idea what I'm showing you there. <laughs> That's the front of my blouse. <laughs> and I'm showing you how I keep all of my papers handy. There's the back. That's the pattern piece for the back of the blouse. And there is the back of the blouse. 
And so what am I showing you now? Oh, I took a sway back and I put a round back and that's what caused the roller coaster effect. See there, look at that huge round back I put in. Goodness sakes. I had to straighten out my grain line. See the purple grain line I straightened out? And there's the sway back. I do 5 eighths inch sway back. Let me see. Pattern instructions. Keep those handy. Always keep those handy too. I pretty much can put a blouse together without the instructions, but sometimes I do need them. Okay, I've got the invisible zipper I'm going to use in my hand. And I think I'm going to tell you about pressing the teeth down. Press the teeth down. You're going to put this zipper in. And I'm showing you how I put a short one in because I can reach it and I can pull it up by myself. So that's why I'm putting a short one in. <clears throat> Although I don't know how a long one would be any different. You still can reach the bottom of it. So <laughs> Do what makes sense for you, okay? So I'm getting ready to press. When you do an invisible zipper, you have to iron the teeth down flat. That is if you don't have the invisible zipper foot. If you have the invisible zipper foot, then no, don't even do it this way. Use the invisible zipper foot. But I'm going to use just a regular zipper foot on my sewing machine. And before I put that zipper in, I'm going to press the teeth really, really flat. I've already deleted all of these clips from my camera, so I can't go back and get this clip again and see if the sound will come with it. That is so irritating when your equipment doesn't work. All right, what am I telling you here? Who knows? <laughs> it looks like I was taking a swim there for a minute. I'm taking a friction marker and I'm marking the wrong side because I forgot to put my wrong side marks. Now somebody said put the marks in the seam allowance. Well, I, I kind of need great big marks. I don't want to have to search for it. And I've never had a problem with these friction markers not coming out. So be sure, you know, this fabric looks very much alike on both sides. So be sure you mark the wrong side. There's my iron. I'm waving it in the air. Probably telling you, you can find a new version. They don't have this one anymore. They replace them with new ones every so often, but you go to my Amazon store, you can find the newest version. It's a pretty color, if I remember right. And it's $300. I think I probably paid $250 for this one and its former cousins, but, you know, everything's gone up. Oh, try a piece of fabric. Don't ever iron until you do a test. And I'm telling you how I threw away all the scraps. Don't throw away your scraps until you're done with your project. I cannot tell you how many times I have pulled scraps out of the trash can for that very reason right there. Or like the back neck facing, I hadn't cut it right. I forgot to add the seam allowance to it for my zipper in the back. And so I didn't have any scraps to pull out of the trash. I had to go get a new piece of fabric. So don't throw your scraps away. And this is not the kind of fabric you can make a quilt with. So I'm testing on the inside of that piece. I'm wrinkling it all up for some reason. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm doing that. I'll tell you one thing that you might want to do. Uh, it worked out okay in this case, but really it helps if you will cut a one inch strip of interfacing and iron it on the on the seam line there down the center back if I had put some interfacing down both sides from the neck to as long as the zipper uh, I didn't go down all the way that far but I did not do it in this case and it came out fine I was just very fortunate that it did okay I'm holding up the invisible zipper you can watch so many different videos there's dozens of them on YouTube on how to install an invisible zipper with a regular zipper foot and I'm reading a website to you right there that I was watching that day and of course now that I can't hear myself telling you 
what website it was. <laughs> I'll put it in the description box below, okay, what video I was watching that day. But there truly are many, many of them. Just do a search on YouTube how to install Invisible Zipper. Now, if you want to be sure it's without the Invisible Zipper foot, how to install an Invisible Zipper with regular zipper foot. And many, many of them will come up for you, okay? Okay, I'm unzipping the zipper. I think I'm getting ready to show you how to press it here. Before I put this Invisible Zipper in, I'm going to press the teeth flat. That's what my mouth just said. Unzip it, lay it down, and get ready to iron it. Now, iron it from the fabric side. I don't know, both sides are fabric, so I don't know why I told you that. But one side is more the fabric side. I don't know if it's the right side or the wrong side, but the teeth, press it from both sides, and then you'll just be sure. And it presses the teeth down really flat. I'm telling you there, press it from the fabric side and iron it flat, flat, flat. I'm going to take my iron. You can watch me. I'm just smashing the teeth down. I'm not worried that my iron's going to melt that zip. Even if it's plastic or polyester or whatever it is, my iron did not melt it. And here I am showing you up close. Look how flat that dude is. Isn't that nice? And I'm telling you, iron it on the fabric side, and that will flatten it out the best. Aren't you glad this clip is over? <laughs> it is going to be impossible to surge this edge once this zipper's in here. I've already got these three snips in it, and I wish I hadn't snipped it. These three snips in the back, don't snip those if you're going to put a zipper in it. Because when I surge it now, those aren't really going to be covered. I'm going to have to put some fray check dots on those three marks right there. Those three marks say, I'm the back. That's what they say. And we already know it's the back because it's going to have a zipper in it. So I'm going to take this to my serger, and I'm going to surge this entire edge all the way down. And I'm going to surge this entire edge all the way down. It'll probably take me 30 minutes to go figure out which serger to use and figure out what color thread I want to put on it and all of that. I'll be back. So you can see now I have surged all of that fraying stuff off, and I have a really nice finished edge. I still have the three slits I made in this for the notches, the matching notches. I'm taking my fray check that I keep a long pin in because I never can get the stuff to come out. And I am going to put a dot, a dot, a dot, a dot on each of those places. And this stuff dries real fast. There you go. And you see how I put a dot? I don't know what y'all can see. <laughs> I have my real close-up glasses on. But I have just put some fray check on those three slits right there. So they will not come unraveled and my zipper fall out and my clothes fall off. <laughs> Alright, here we got to do the three on here. See, the idea is you put the three up to each other. And that's how you know that you've got the matching places. This one's almost surged. I didn't cut this side as deep. I don't like about cutting out slinky fabrics. One side cuts out different than the other. Almost always. So there we go. Dot, dot, dot. Then you take your big, long hat pin, stick it back in the hole. The hat pin won't, won't stick. You can always get it out. But boy, that sure does help. Keep that little tiny hole open. You sew with your material right side up. When you do the old-fashioned kind of zipper, you sew your seam together first and then you put the zipper in, okay? So we're going to start on the top. We still need our seam allowance marked, and there it is. We're still going to start with the dongle down, only we're going to start with this. Let me see, what side are we going to start with? We're going to start with the Y, and we're still going to start with this side of the Y. The side of the Y that's closest 
to the edge of your back, your center back, where the seam is, where the seam is going to be. Right there you can see my crease. The arm that's closest to it. This is going to stay over here. This is one of the things that saves me. It takes me longer to make something, but I always do a practice. So now we're going to practice it this way. Okay, so we're going to play like we've sewn, 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 sewn this zipper on the right side <laughs> next to the seam. What are we going to do after we get that done? And you see how now when you fold it in, you're going to have a zipper. And so now this side has to come over here and it has to be, now this is really confusing you guys, this is the most confusing part. So this is going to be all in there, all in there, all in there, and that's going to zip up and this has to be on here, on here, that's right. So see, so now the other side of the Y is going to plop over here. It's going to plop over here and it's going to sew down to this side, see. The dongle is still down, only this will all be attached. So let's play like we're sewing this side now. Now this is our practice. <laughs> this is our practice to make sure we don't want to sew all these stitches in this thing, especially in slinky fabric. We don't want to sew all these stitches in and then have to rip them out. So take some time to do a practice. Alright, so we're going to play like that's all sewn in there, and this is all sewn in here. Let's just put a pin way down here. This is all sewn in all down here. This is all sewn in all down here. Okay, does this help you? It helps me, let me tell you. So here we are, this is what we've got. This is play like. So now we're going to play like it's all sewn up, and we want to zip the zipper up is the little dongle here on the front where we can find it. There it is, there's dongle duty. So let's take this little dongle, I don't know why they couldn't have made it like a sixteenth of an inch instead of a quarter <laughs> inch, good gravy. Probably why you get a hundred for fifteen dollars. Okay, so see, if that was all sewn in, this would be perfect. So I'm doing it correctly, all right? So let's try that again. Let's take this side, let's unzip it. Let's go back to step one, and like I said, it doesn't matter which side you start at. From what I can tell. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the, we don't need this piece anymore right now. So we've got the right side at the back, we have it right side up, the blue X is on the bottom, I've got the zipper, the invisible zipper here, it's in the shape of a Y. A Y. The arm of the Y that's closest to the center back where the zipper is going, this arm right here is going to get sewn down first. Does that make sense? Now before I sew it down, I'm going to go and put steam -a seam on it <laughs> and I am going to press it down on that seam line with the steam -a seam on the tape. I'm just going to take the steam -a seam, run a line of it on the tape, on the um, zipper tape, steam -a seam tape on the zipper tape, and then I'm going to iron it down so it lines right up with that fold. Then I can go and just sew that thing. And sometimes I sew it two or three times to get it close enough to the teeth. So I'm going to go do that next, and then I will be back. I'm going to give myself a little, a little cheat sheet that this has to be up, that X is going to go on top of this X. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm taping the right thing. This I'll be able to see, this I'll be able to see. I'm going to put this down with the sticky stuff on the back and I'm going to iron it to that seam allowance right there. How about that? I'll be back. Let me show you what I've done. Notice the dongle is up. And I have ironed the steam -a seam see, the steam -a seam I've ironed it to the top of the tape. The top of the tape. I know that seems odd, like you wouldn't do that. 
But we'll see if I'm right when I go over there and I do it. Now, where's my little orange X? Orange X was going to tell me. There's my orange X. It's almost ironed off, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> there it is. My orange X. And I'm going to tear off the paper. Now, that arm of the Y is sticky. It's got glue on it and it's going to iron down. The other side I'm going to leave the paper on. I don't want it ironing on to anything yet. So let's go over to the ironing board, iron that on, and I'll be back. So here's the thing about zippers. If you've done one, you could do them all day long. But when you only do one every two years, <laughs> You have to go through all of this and so this ought to help those of you who have never done one before because it's like I've never done one before either. <laughs> but I've got that all glued down. I'm still working on just one half of the back. Here's the other half over here. Not using it. One half of the back. Here's our Y. We can't see Joy. Here's our Y. Here's the other arm of the Y. The arm closest to the edge is going down and I'm getting ready to sew it. I have a zipper foot on. So you have to get your zipper foot lined up so it's going to sew the right way. So I'm going to move the needle all the way over as far as we'll go the other way. Because you want it to butt up next to. I'm not using an invisible zipper foot. And do like a 3.0. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> Now, sometimes I don't like these big machines for doing things like this. My cheapy machine, which is at the shop right now, or my 1130 or my 930, has a smaller zipper foot. And it would be so nice to get up even closer to this thing. So you want to sew up close as you can, remember, close as you can to the teeth. And this is not getting that close, in my opinion. So I may have to change. Now fold the zipper down. Take your fingers, let your fingers be your tools, only not under the needle. <laughs> How about a screwdriver? Let's use a screwdriver. <clears throat> and hold that zipper down. Look there. Now I can really get close. I may have to go back and go over it again. I usually do have to go over it several times. But for now, this is what we're going to do. Now you don't want to sew over the zipper. You don't want to do that, but this is why you have to iron the teeth down flat, see? Ooh, now I'm getting real close. Okay, so get past the foot, fold the teeth down out of your way, and sew as close to them as you can get with that zipper foot without hitting the teeth. Don't hit the teeth. Stay on the ribbon or the tape See, I'm getting really close to it now. I started out not very close, but when I go back the second time, I'll be able to get it better. In fact, I might go from the other end. It always starts out. It's like when you're knitting and crocheting. It's so hard to start a project. They're so wiggly and wobbly. But boy, having this glued down, shoot, that helps so much. So you come down until you hit the hoozy, and you'll have to stop because you can't go any further. Back stitch, lock it. Now that thing's glued down and sewn down. That is down there. And so now what you do is you flip it, flip it, and zip it. And see if you can see those teeth when it's zipped up. You don't want to be able to see these teeth. That's why it's called invisible. <laughs> I know. And it looks really good. It looks really good. If somebody didn't come up to my back and like pull the zipper apart. <laughs> it looks real good so far so good. Now here's another hard part. The next hard part, I can't see you Joy. I don't like to go sideways with my face because my face falls on the table. <laughs> Wait till you're 70. <laughs> um, the next hard part is now taking this piece here, the other side, and 
getting the zipper exactly, 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 exactly lined up so they meet at the top. But I've got the iron-on tape on it, and so I'll take it over to the ironing board, and I'll pin, and I'll play, and I'll practice, and once I get it ironed on there with the sticky tape, I'll come back and sew that side down. I'll be back. All right, I've sewn down both sides. First I glued it, then I sewed it. Here's the inside. You can see we're still open down here at the bottom because you can only sew to the, as far as the dongle. You know, the dongle's all the way down. So now you want the dongle all the way up. The zipper pull, let's call it, I always call everything the wrong thing. The zipper pull, you want it all the way up out of your way now. So now you're going to sew the rest of the seam. i got to sew all the way down to the bottom of the center back of this garment. So what you're going to do is you're going to find where you ended up sewing with your zipper foot and you are going to sew a couple inches so you got all these tails left and you got to sew those in. It may not be 5 8 inch. <laughs> I'm going to try my darndest to get it to be 5 8 inch, I promise you. You can see it kind of went off because I the dongle got in my way. So I will start. Your hands are everywhere, Joy. I know. I will start here where I was 5 8 inch and then I will sew. But right after I sewed the second side of the Y on, I came over here to my sleeve board and I laid this up here like this and I pinned it so it wouldn't move and I got my press cloth and I put it on here and I steamed it real good. So it's pressed really nice plus that steam -a seam glue has melted and that will hold it in too. I'm going to sew this the rest of the way up. So now I've got all of my pattern pieces here. I'm ready to put this blouse together and the zipper's done because I did it first. So I don't have to worry about it anymore ever. <laughs> it is finished. Now that we have the zipper in, we're going to finish making the blouse. Let me show you something else that I think is horrible about an invisible zipper, but I fixed mine. Look here where I sewed past where the dongle was. I sewed past using the zipper foot and it is a mile away in my opinion from where it needs to be. You can see how they don't line up. I hate that. So if I have to have the needle flying up and down in the air with no foot at all, I'll do it because I want that to match up and sew in the seam line. That just bugs me. <laughs> do you have to fix it? No. <laughs> It'll have a little pleat on the front. Don't put pins in your mouth. You'll have a little pleat on the front where the zipper ends. Right here. Right here. There's a little bubble because the stitches don't touch. I can't stand that. So I'm going to fix mine, but you can do what you want with yours. How do you like my pointer? <laughs> We're going to talk the papers, the direction papers. For those of you newbies, my friend Lori in Wisconsin, we're going to talk directions. The first thing you need to do is mark what you're getting ready to make. So I'm making a view D. This is page, there are four pages of directions. This is page one of four. On the first page it shows you all the views. You can see here, I <laughs> hope, I can't see what you can see. I'm making view D. Well, why did you mark view F? Because I started to make view F evidently sometime in my life. And maybe I will make view F someday, but right now I'm making view D because it's summertime and I want a little bitty sleep. And I hope I'm not screaming since I'm right on top of this camera. If I am, please turn me down. So I'm marking the view I'm going to make. Now this one has bust sizes in it. See here how it talks about bust sizes? It says for bust B cup, miss, and bust C cup, women. Views A, B, C, views D, E, F, and it tells you what pattern pieces to use for your bust size. Very good. And then up here, it tells you how to determine what your bust size is. You measure 
your high bust and your full bust and determining on how many inches you have. I think I have four or five inches. Yeah. So I'm a D cup. You know, I have a really flat chest up above my boobs. <laughs> and then all of a sudden there's, oh, there's boobs all of a sudden. So mine's four to five inches. So I need a D cup, even though I only wear a C in a bra. So y'all can figure that out. Um, this shows you all of the pieces that are here in the pattern. I have marked the pieces I need for my bust size. 1C and 2C. Okay, that's what those two marks mean. Which is really strange because I'm making a D. But see, it says ABC and I'm making a D. So isn't that strange? Read, read, read. Read, read, read. Look down here, it says, for bust D cup, views A, B, C, use front pattern 1C and side pattern 2C. So it's important that you pay attention to this information here on page 1. Then, if you've never cut anything out before, it gives you drawings. Every pattern, every commercial pattern gives you a drawing of where to put your pieces to cut them out. I quit using those many, many, many moons ago <laughs> because I just cut mine out how I want to cut them out and I always buy extra fabric. So, since I'm making View D a tunic, you can see down here at the bottom, let me see if I can put this down and you can still see it. Down here at the bottom, this is 1D. This is 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. What does the 1 mean? Hello? Oh, the 1 means the front. Yeah, 1A, B, C, D. So it's down here it's showing you how to cut it out according to the pieces you picked for your bust size. But this is for the A tunic. We're not making the A tunic. We're making the D tunic. So let's see if we can find the D tunic to figure out how to sew it. And I'm sorry if you can't see this very good, but I'm having a hard time holding it up in the air for you. And then if you speak Spanish, here's a tunica. So you can have directions in Spanish as well. All right, now we're on page two. See, it tells you the pages two of four. And there's three of four and four of four. This page continues telling you how to cut everything out. Here's the D tunic, and it shows you how to put it on the material for your different sizes. Lay it out on your material to cut it out. Here it shows you the interfacing, D, E, F interfacing. If you cut out view D, E, or F, you're going to need interfacing according to these directions. Sewing directions. Sewing directions. So it gives you a little bit of stuff on zigzagging and surging and stuff. So I'm not going to follow the directions here, even though it says sewing directions, because it says this is for tunic A, B, and C. And I'm not making tunic A, B, or C. So that's the end of page two. Let's go to page three. Here's page three. And sure enough, I sure hope you can see these good. If you could see my camera, <laughs> it's actually right up under my chin, and I'm looking over it. Here you can see is tunic D and F. D and F. So depending on what you chose on page one to make, and I actually chose D and F. They're very much alike, except one has a long sleeve and some kind of foo-foo at the neck here. So D and F, that's what view. Find your view. Here it is, tunic D and F. So this is where you would start reading the directions and following them to put your blouse pieces together with your sewing machine. Here's step one and two and three. So notice this, the directions come with drawings, with diagrams. So here, this direction right here, number one, here's a number one picture to go with it. This direction, number two, right here, here's a number two. 
Now don't go by this number two. This number two is for the pattern piece. Number ten is for a pattern piece. Number nine is for a pattern piece. This is direction number one. This is direction number two. This is direction number three. And they give you drawings. So when you get done with direction number three, we're going to go to the next page, which is the last page. And we are going to find steps four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And here for view F, it tells you what to do to the outside. It looks like it's got six buttons and then you're going to make some kind of loop-de-loops -loop, hooking them together. And for view D, we're just going to top stitch it. And this is what I'm doing. Top stitch duty. So you see here, here's step four, picture number four. Step five, picture number five. Step six, picture number six. See? Isn't it easy? This tells you what to do for D and F here, and then you've still got some more steps over here. You've got step 11 and step 12 right here, 11 and 12, and then you come to tunic E. So you're not done sewing your garment together until you're done with step 12. And what I usually do, if I need directions, but I don't, usually I just look at the picture and I know what the picture means for me, and you will too eventually. So what I do is that when I get through with one, I check it. When I get through with two, I check it. When I get through with three, I check it. And see here where they sewed the center back seam? They did that on step three. I made that my step one, and I put a zipper in mine. So that's just to tell you about these sheets that come with your commercial pattern. Very nice. So now I am going to go and I am going to iron my interfacing to the two pieces that require the interfacing. Now, where did we find the interfacing in? Was it on page two? Yes. So it tells me that I've got to put interfacings on piece 11 and 12, which I already have cut out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is iron my interfacing to those two pieces. Then I'm going to stay stitch. Stay stitching is when you're going to sew just close to the seam line. The seam line is 5 8 inch, you're going to sew 1 half inch. And you are going to sew. And look at the arrows. The arrows tell you the direction to sew, and that's very important because you have to sew with the grain line on these curves. So pay attention here on the stay stitching, we're going to start at the shoulder and sew to the middle. Here on the front, we're going to start center front and we're going to sew up. We're going to start at center front and we're going to sew up again. So that's stay stitching. Choose your regular stitch length, two and a half. Let's see what it tells you to do. But child, that's not what it says. Yes, it does. It says one half inch and follow the arrows. So see? See? I just know because I've done it 200 trillion times. <laughs> so this actually is for a different view, but it's still the stay stitching rules, okay? One half inch. Regular stitch length and follow the arrows. But this is for tunic A, B, and C. So let's get back on the right tunic and you will see it tells you the same exact thing to do. Stay stitching. You can see it up there. It is actually step one and you can see that you're going to start at the shoulders and sew to the center. Start at the shoulder and sew to the center. Here's the back neck facing. Here's the inner facing on the back. Now I know you're asking me, what interfacing do you use, Joy? You can use whatever interfacing you like. I would just say make sure it's very lightweight. You don't want heavy interfacing in your blouses. My favorite interfacing is Palmer and Plesh. If you go online, palmerandplesh.com, they have really, really, really nice interfacing. I think Pamela's patterns, I think maybe she has interfacing. Um, lots of places. Can you go to Joann's and get it? Sure. I used to use the Joann's kind to pell on. Just be sure it's lightweight. Put it in your hand. Feel it. Make sure it's soft. Make sure you don't mind your blouse feeling like that. But what I want to show you here is how I'm taking the piece of colored carbon paper and I'm putting it underneath the facing. This is the front facing. You can see the letters are messed up because I took the tuck. I took a tuck up there so it doesn't gape on my chest. And I drew with 
the little who's he watching here you just go like this and you draw and I drew on the interfacing I'll lift this blue paper up and show it to you do it on the interfacing not on your fashion fabric because this stuff 99.9% .9 of the time is not coming out <laughs> But be very careful with it. It's not friction carbon paper. It's like forever carbon paper. It's supposed to wash out, but maybe it will, maybe it won't. So let me show you what I've got under here now. Of course, I've got my little washer weights. Actually, they're called nuts. Removed my carbon paper. That's the only thing I'm going to have to mark on this entire pattern, so I'm putting it back in the package. I always put stuff away. Well, I say that. If, if it's something that I'm not going to need again for the project, then I put it away right away. I, I am a very good putter away of things. My husband, not so much. <laughs> so here you can see, there is what I'm going to have to sew to cut open the V that is on this pattern. And so I have it drawn really, really good so I can see it right there on that interfacing. It does not show on the front. At least it won't show on the front when I get through making the garment. All right, so I just wanted to show you that tip. I have the fronts sewn together. The side front and the center front. Now I am following the, instruct following the instructions and I'm pressing these two long seams to the center. I'm using a ham. This is called a ham. It's a fabric ham. You have to have one. You have to have one if you're going to sew. Pardon my phone. Talking to my sister. We're going to go visit her. Yeah. So you have to have a ham because you have to have something to press on when you have a hump, a lump, a mountain, a hill, or whatever you want to call it that you need to press over. You don't want to press the shaping for your bust when it's got a seam going right down the middle of it. You don't want to press that flat. I have this seam pressed already. This one. We're going to press this one over here next. So we're going to shape it on our hand. Now there's different hands. There's big hands, there's little hands, and there's giant hams. Now this ham I had special made. You can have one special made. The lady's name is Sonia. I'll put her uh, information below. This kind of ham is from a company called Stitch Nerd. I think that's what her company is called. And she makes them for you. And you can choose your fabric. I chose this fabric for the front and this fabric for the back. One of them's cotton, one of them's wool. And she has different shapes. She has big hams, she has little hams. I just ordered from her one that you can put on your hand. And so you can like put it up inside your shirt and press. Or you can put it inside something else and press. I just thought that was cool. So you have to have a ham. Now I'm gonna press this with steam. I'm not gonna touch it with the iron. This is really slinky material. But I need to be able to see what I'm doing so I can shape it, so I don't want to cover it with a press cloth, see? Now there's kind of a big hump there. <laughs> Telling you. Okay, move it down. I have not first this seam yet. I want to press it first because it's a lot easier to press a wide seam than it is a surged off seam. Lots of steam. I'm not touching it. I'm just getting really close and I am steaming it. Now when you're in the flat part, you can do it flat. And you can hold it with your hand over here. Don't steam yourself. It's hot <laughs> and it burns. I had to change my needle. I have a 7511 in. I had an 8012 in. It was like putting a pitchfork through this fabric. It just did not like it. Okay, get that all pressed. Okay, that looks good. Now, I wanted to tell you something else. 
A lot of you asked me to show you my fit corrections while I'm sewing. I have a low shoulder. This is my low shoulder. This is my high shoulder. I adjust the low shoulder right now. Put it up against your body. Figure out which shoulder. Do that, my friends. <laughs> do it. I promise you, if you don't do it, you're going to cut off the wrong shoulder. This is the front. It goes on like this. Right shoulder. <laughs> mark it. Put a mark on it. Put an R. R for right. So what I'm going to do is lower this right now. My shoulder is one half inch lower, but I'm going to lower this one quarter inch because, I don't know, I'm not very good at math, but to me, if you lower the front a quarter inch and you lower the back a quarter inch, to me that totals a half inch. And so that's the way I have always done it. So I get a ruler. So you know you have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So mark, I mark the 5 8 inch seam allowance here. And it's kind of hard to deal with in a slinky. But do the best you can. That looks good to me. So that's my 5 8 inch. I'll show you up close. That's my 5 8 inch. Then I come down another quarter at the 5 8 inch. You know it goes 5 8 inch this way too, right? It goes 5 8 inch both ways. So I make sure I come down a quarter at that intersection. Over here to here. And then out here to here. So you can see this. Now this is only a quarter of an inch. But a quarter on the front and a quarter on the back equals a half inch. In my opinion. It works. My blouses, you can see I'm wearing one. They always come out right doing that. To me, if I was to take a half inch and a half inch, it would total an inch. And I don't think it would work. So let me show you this real close. See, I said right for right shoulder. And then I marked the 5 eighths inch. And then I went down the quarter inch and drew it over. Because that's where I'm going to sew the seam in. All right? But before I do that, I'm going to go and I'm going to serge off these two long seams. The seams are right here. The two princess seams that go into the shoulder, that's what these are. And I'm going to go trim those off with a serger, and I'll be back. Before I sew these shoulders together, I want to show you something else you have to do. When you lower the shoulder, you still have to make the armhole the same size as it was before. And you can see I'm cutting a quarter inch and a quarter inch off of the shoulder up here, which will be a total of a half inch. Down here, I am going to draw a line one half inch down, not one quarter. I'm only doing one layer, not two layers. So when I draw down one half inch, it will stay one half inch. So let me show you what I do. I always do this before I go sew the shoulder, the low shoulder, and I leave it here. <laughs> until I get to the side seam. And I just eyeball this. I'm usually right on. Let me look and see. Yep, right on. There. I do it up to the notches. And then I am going to trim these down. But I always mark it with the friction marker. Otherwise, I look at it and I'm like, well, did I trim that down or didn't I trim that down? Then I've got to compare it to the pattern. I've got to compare it to the other side. And it's a royal pain. <laughs> Let me show you. So up here you can see both sides. I've marked how I'm going to take the shoulder in. And here at the arms, this is underneath my arm, my armpit. I've drawn the one half inch mark there where I'm going to cut that away. But I'm leaving it there and I'm going to do it later when I sew the side seams. But I put that there so I know, hey, you didn't cut it yet. And after I cut it, I leave it on the table right there. I leave the two little slivers there so I can see, oh look, I cut them off. There they are. <laughs> I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. You can see there's the zipper. I'm going to sew the shoulder, the shoulder, the side seam, and the side seam. Now you can cut this underneath the arm, 
down here, right here. You can cut it now or you can cut it later. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I usually wait till I sew it together and then I cut it, okay? So I'll take a picture of it or turn the camera back on real quick when I do that. I've sewn both the side seams. They are raggedy, raggedy, raggedy. This stuff ravels terrible. So obviously it needs to be surged. But, like when I do on a hem, I sew the 5 8 inch in first because this stuff is slippery and it moves around. And I want lots of pins and I want to make sure I'm sewing it at 5 8 So now, I will surge it. I will go surge it. And I will actually mark the 5 8 inch right here, the rest of the way down. This is going to be open on the sides. So I wanted to show you how I cut this little area right here. I actually opened it up now that it's already sewn together. This is under my armpit here. And I'm going to take a wheelie dealy. That's a rotary cutter. And I'm going to cut from the notch down here into the arm one half inch and move it. Move it around out of your way and up to the other notch. So now I have lowered underneath the armhole this much. This much. And I'm just going to leave this here. I'm just going to leave it here. Sometimes I pin it to my chicken. See my chicken? Sometimes I pin it to Dottie. Dottie or Rose, my chickens. See right there? And so now I know, hey, I've cut underneath that armhole. There it is. <laughs> so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to serge these two side seams. Not together. Not together. Because you're going to have these, um, what do you call these at the bottom? The openings. <laughs> See? And so you're going to need to have an open seam here so you can finish your slits. Your slits right here. Duty. Okay, I'll be back. I want to show you here how I brought this over to the ironing board and I pressed the 5 8 inch seam open. This is the side seam. And here where the slit is, I've gone ahead and I have pressed 5 8 inch open. The 5 8 inch line, I've pressed it really good and clapped it with my clapper. You know what a clapper is. You clap it and it stays. So now, just like the hem, when I go and I serge this edge off, if it's a little bit crooked, it won't matter because I have the exact 5 8 inch in there right now. Here I'm going to show you how I put in a bigger sleeve head into a smaller armhole without crimping the sleeve. See how I wrap it around my finger. I'm putting my finger underneath on the sleeve. I'm just showing you here to put your pin in, take a tiny bite and put it in at the 5 8 inch mark. Here I am folding it around my finger, taking a tiny bite. Don't put pins in your mouth. <laughs> I'm taking a tiny bite on the 5 8 inch line. Teeny tiny. You don't want it to move. If you make a big fat bite there, it's going to move up and down the pen. I have music on. I'm sorry. Music on. I'm moving. See? See how it's fitting in there? I didn't have any problems with these sleeves whatsoever. Here's the notches. Now on the side where I lowered the armhole and lowered the top, the notches aren't going to line up. They usually don't line up anyway on a pattern. Fold it over your finger, pin it, tiny bite, and pin it close together like, you know, no more than an inch apart on those, maybe a half inch. See how the little part's got to go to the big part? I'm going to fold it around my finger. I don't know why this works. I learned this from um, Louise Cutting, I think it was. I saw her do this. Louise Cutting 
is the queen of sewing tips. If you don't know Louise Cutting, look her up on YouTube. She is amazing on easy ways to do everything. I learned a lot from her. A lot of it I already knew, but I didn't know this till I saw her do it. Oh, Joy, quit dancing. Two, three, girl, be still. Here we go. We're getting close to the end. <laughs> I've got Super Trooper on. How can you be still, for heaven's sakes? I'm playing ABBA. All right. All done. Look at that. Okay. Are we on? Yeah, look here. I'm showing you how I sew the sleeve in and how there's no bubbles or notches or pinches. See? And all I did was wrap it around my finger and pin it. Now here it is after I surged it. I always surge my sleeve seams. Yeah. Uh, and there is, looks like a facing, what, no, that's the uh, hem. Remember, I folded the hem up way, way back when? And so now it's all ready to put in. Okay, here I'm showing you that I have hemmed up both the sleeves. I already had it creased, so all I had to do was put steam a seam all the way around one quarter inch, peel off the paper, iron that down, and then I went and I stitched it on my sewing machine. Now what am I showing you? I'm showing you the top of the blouse where I put the facing in. Now, I don't know if I've told you yet that I had to fix the back neck facing and add seam allowance to it, but you can see it's white. It doesn't match the rest of the garment. I don't know what that black dot is up there on that facing. Anyway, still going. I'm going to show you how I finish the hem at the bottom of the slit. That's the side seam. This is the slit. One is done, one isn't done. So I thought, oh, I'll show them real fast how I finish the hem at the bottom at the corners. See, there's the inside of that one, the edge of it. And here's this one. And you can see that I pressed the hem in first. <laughs> I pressed this seam allowance in 5 8 inch. Then I searched it so it's not 5 8 inch anymore. I started out with 1 and a quarter inch here at the bottom. And I doubt that it's a complete 1 and a quarter anymore. But I know that where I have that fold, that's where the hem goes. So here's what I do. I take this corner right here. And this is why you need these creases, another reason that they really work for you. I want to sew this together from here to here. I'll be sewing one and a quarter inch here to this right here. I fold, fold to fold. Fold it at the hem and match up those two fold pressed lines that I put in there. Match them up. And then I sew that. I sew it right here. All right, I'll show you. Fold to fold. This is an innie, this is an outie. Put a pin right there. Now, you may or may not line up exactly here at the edge. Maybe you will and maybe you won't. The way I serge, you probably won't. <laughs> So that's why we want these folds pressed in here, okay? So then I'm going to come over here to my machine. I have an open toe embroidery foot because I want to see this fold. And if I can't see it, I'm going to put on these 3.0 reading glasses right on top of my contact lenses. And I'll guarantee you I can see that fold. Take the pin out. You can still see your fold down there. So right up that fold. Did you see how I did that? Awesome! <laughs> Cut. Trim your threads as you go. Threads are icky. 
trim your threads as you go. Then when you're walking down the street, people won't say, well, she obviously made that. Look at those strings hanging. See how I sewed that? Now, did you see how I flipped it? I've sewn it right there and right there. Wrong side, wrong side. Now I'm going to do a Peggy Sagers. I'm not trimming this corner. Don't trim the corner. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Don't trim the corner. Fold it. Fold it. And then what it does is it fills in this little line right here instead of going up at an angle and leaving a funky glob there. Fold it and turn it. If it doesn't come all the way, get one of those little point pusher outer things or a pin. I have no idea how the pattern tells you to do it because that's how I do it with all of my extensive years of sewing. <laughs> that's how I do it. So I will come back. I've got two more to do. You can see now, I hope you can see now, that these two are done. So I will come back and I'm going to sew. This is hard to do. Sew close up. I'm going to sew across this hem, down this slit, across the slit, back up the slit, and across the hem. And I'm going to go all the way around doing that. And then this garment will be all done. I'll try it on for you. Alright, so my hem is folded up. See my sleeves are in? Did you see my sleeves? Now usually I press the seam of the sleeves toward the sleeve, but when you have a teeny tiny, itty bitty, teeny weeny piece at the bottom under your arm, you can't press the seam going out toward your arm or it's going to show under your arm. And you know, people come and they lift your arm and look under it all the time, so you want to be careful about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go steam a seam. Do I have to steam a seam? No, but I just know that if I steam a seam the hem down first, it will be so much easier to sew. So I'm going to go put the hem in with the steam a seam, then I'm going to sew the hem in up and around both side seams, that slit at the bottom, then I'm going to try it on. I've got my green pants on just for you. This is my second try on of this blouse. I tried it on yesterday. And I decided I couldn't stand the neck up here. Now, I actually had a red mark. Let me show you. I can't remember what I've told you, and I haven't told you in great detail. But yesterday, this was still on here like this. That's the way I cut it out. And I told you at some point, or maybe I just told myself, that when I trim it off underneath this sleeve, because I take this in a half inch and I lower this a half inch, I take the pieces I cut off and I pin them to my pin cushion. So I can remember that I have cut this off and I will tape it onto the pattern later. I'll tape it on here, but I don't tape it on until I'm all done. I don't know why, I just want it there where I can see it. So I'm gonna tape it to the pattern, but I lowered the neck. I, I can't stand things up here in my throat. You know, that's why I'm fixing Jerry shirts. <laughs> can't stand things in my throat. So even with the round back correction, the neck can still be too high for you. It was fine on the sides, so I've only lowered it here in the front. So why didn't I cut it on the red line? Because you have to have a seam allowance, okay? <laughs> so this is my 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then I just tapered it up into that curve. So it turned out wonderful. <laughs> now let me tell you something. Another boo-boo you can make. Remember that the back of this blouse, this tunic, does not have a center back seam in it, in the pattern. But I wanted a zipper in it, an invisible zipper. It didn't have to be invisible, but I did invisible. The other kind would have worked fine. The other kind is easier, in my opinion. So, what I forgot to do, and I had to start all over <laughs> on the facing, was I forgot that the back neck facing is to be cut on the fold because the pattern doesn't have a seam allowance. So I had to go back and add a seam allowance to this back neck facing. 
Then, <laughs> how many mistakes do I make a minute? Then, I had decided to clean up my sewing room and I threw all the trash away. So I threw away all the extra. There was just a few extra pieces. There was enough to get a back neck facing. So, I went into my stash and I just got a plain white fabric to make the facing with. And I think I probably should have done that to start with because then it, the print wouldn't show through. I don't know if the print would have showed through either way, but... <laughs> So, I've got the sleeves to put in still, and I've got to hem it up, and then this little number will be done. It's not the easiest pattern to make because of this, but if you will go slow and careful and draw, I not only drew the cutting line and the sewing line on my pattern piece. I drew it on the interfacing side. I basted the center of that V. I basted it with turquoise thread. So this would stay still while I sewed this. And then I turned it. You have to trim this really close to get this to lay flat here. This is probably a sixteenth of an inch in here and cut to these tiny little corners. In fact, I think I'll put some freight check on the back of it <laughs> just to be sure it doesn't come unravel. Okay, I'll come back when I have it completely done and then I'll show it to you again. I'm going to show you the inside of this V. This is the bottom of the V at the neck, the bottom of the V. You see how teeny, tiny, itty bitty, teeny weeny I clipped that? You see how I can pull it totally, totally flat? Well, I just fray check that very carefully. Squirt some fray check on a pen, squirt some fray check on a piece of paper, then put it on with a pen. Don't just put a gob of fray check so it runs down into the front of the blouse. But I fray checked that tiny, tiny. If you don't cut that like that, your V will not lay nice like mine does. You just saw it on me. Hello, where are you? Yours won't lay nice like this if you don't really trim that. How do you how do you put a hem in a curve? How do you do it? <laughs> this is how I do it. I put it on the ironing board and I put a whole bunch of pins and I slant them kind of backwards. They actually could be slanted more than that but I am going to steam that 5 8 inch hem right there. I always fold the hem up if it's one inch, two inches, three inches, half an inch, whatever. I always do it before I sew the sleeve together. I don't hem it, I just press it. So when I sew it together and I get this whole thing smooshed, squished, what do we call it? <laughs> I can't remember the name right now. Scrunched and put into the blouse then the hem will be all ready to just fold up and do it. I always press the hem first. Then I surge it. Then I put it in the garment. Then I finish it. And even if it's the hem on the bottom of a blouse, I do the same thing. I press it up, I surge it, and then I go sew the hem in. Or I do steam a seam. Steam a seam is for stretchy. Steam a seam is for stretchy, stretchy. See right here? stretchy stuff. Why am I using it in this? Because I used it to hold the back. See here where the top of the zipper is in the back? That's got steam -a seam It's got steam -a seam inside here and then it's got steam -a seam holding this to the zipper. See? Will I sew that down? Yes, by hand with white thread with a tiny tiny little stitch. But right now it's just Steam a seam. Awesome stuff. Steam a seam too light. Let me show you a package. This is how it comes. This is what it looks like. Light steam a seam too. I don't know why it has a two on it. And it comes one quarter inch and one half inch. And you can get it on Amazon. And I buy a dozen boxes. I go through this stuff quickly. I love it. 
Okay, here I'm just showing you how I have pressed up that curved hem and see how nice it curved? Then I went and I surged it. So you can see I did a pretty straight job there. And sometimes, you can see there it's a little bit high and there it's a little bit low. But it's usable. And I did use the seam and seam too here, then stitched it. So here it is all done. There's my side seam and you can see how I sewed, 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 went up here, went over here, I passed it, went over here, down here, and around there. And I just did it in one thing. Why didn't I use my cover stitch machine? Because it's a double needle and I would have had to sew straight off here and then come in this way and I don't want to do that. So I use the uh, regular sewing machine to do this and you can see down here how I just turned the corner on my white chalk. So now I'm going to put it on and show it to you. So are you ready to see the final product my friends? <laughs> I made some earrings but I don't know if I like them or hate them. Much better. Now I need a bracelet to go with it. <laughs> Play like I have the blouse on, okay? <laughs> I'm not putting it back on. <laughs>